I'm super excited about this evening. It's going to be a fun night. Um, we're going to do something that I don't think has ever been done in here before. Uh, so as everybody knows, uh, you know, y'all got out of school around what, March? Or like uh, March 18th? Okay, th- thank you, Jay. Dang, I'm impressed with that. <laughs> She was like, um, to be clear, March 18th. And I was like, okay, thank you very much. But what we're going to do tonight is something a little special because as this song just said, I am chosen, not forsaken. And for, and for certain people in here, they may feel as if the last two months haven't been that great for them. And they feel as if certain things might not have happened. And so we wanted to make them feel a little special this evening. And so tonight... We are going to have the first ever one youth graduation. And so our seniors are actually in, in uh, the cafe wearing their caps and gowns. They're about to, in a second, walk down this center aisle here, have a seat here. We, we will have a short commencement speech, and then we are going to celebrate them as well. Uh, right now, uh, Brooke, Zach Mayo, and I think somebody else is about to pass out something for everybody. I need y'all, as soon as you get these things, to put them under your seats and tune, and, and you cannot, I repeat, you cannot touch them until we celebrate the seniors that have graduated, because in fact, those are, and I'm going to mute this right now, and so you're going to have those, and when I tell y'all to, y'all are going to pull those out, and and so that's what's going to happen as well. So do not mess with them during the service. I am trusting you. This is a bad idea on my part, but I'm trusting you anyways. So, so you are going to put those under your seat, and I'll tell y'all when to pull them out. And don't touch them until then. Sound good? Great, grand, wonderful. Thank you very much. So at this time, hold on, Brooke's almost done. We will wait on Brooke. Also, there's over 25 of us in here, and we bought 20. Oh, really? Sweet. Thank you. Okay, so, yes. So, so sorry, adults. All right, so at this point in time, I'm going to have to, I'm going to ask everybody to stand up really quick. Stand up really quick. All right, and at this point, we don't make any noise because this is the proper part of graduation. So, Emma, Edgar, Maestro, start that song, please. And here come our 2020 graduates. Thank you. You may be seated. <clears throat> I'm really nervous. <clears throat> Welcome, friends and family, to the 2020 One Youth graduation. This is a joyous occasion which we have waited so long and have waited for so dearly, and I cannot believe that this day has finally come. We have worked so hard, but don't worry, there is more to come. As the great poet Justin Bieber said, I was like baby, baby O in kindergarten. But now, as the great poet Allo Black said, I'm the man. I'm the man. I'm the man. Anyways, so I, I never got the opportunity to do a commencement speech on myself, so I thought I'm going to have fun as well. 
So anyways, so this evening I'm excited because, as I just said, I've never gotten the opportunity to talk to seniors wearing caps and gowns, and so it's really cool. But what I want to do this evening is not just talk to the three of you, but to everybody as well, because I believe that there are certain lessons that, that happen in life of that all of us need to know and need to understand, and especially as you're getting ready to graduate, this, this lesson specifically is very important. But again, this is for everybody, not just these three, but for everybody as well. So graduation's here. And it's a very cliche thing that is said a lot, but it's a very true statement also. Graduation is not the end of your story, but it is just the ending of one chapter and on to the other. And yes, that is a very, very cheesy statement, but I love thinking about my life as a story. Evan, so my goal in life is to make sure that that my story is its best it can be. My goal is to make sure of that everybody in here's story is the best story it can be. And because of that, as one chapter ends and then as a new chapter begins, it's so important for us to take a step back and realize what is going on. And so tonight's lesson is a very important one, not just for you three, but for everybody, because there will always come a point in time of where we need to understand this. So in any good story, be it a drama, comedy, superhero, silent film even. There comes a point in every story of where the hero is faced with a decision. Do I do this on my own or do I get help? Because if I do this on my own, I'm going to make things really tough on me. I might be able to do it, but it might kill me also. But if I go and I get help, I'm going to be able to do this and do this properly. As I was thinking about this, because of the geek I am, I thought to the Avengers. And in the first Avengers film, the Avengers over face of with fiv- uh, words. And I stutter on top of that. So the Avengers over faced with defeating a enemy of that none of them on their own could face. In fact, because of their selfishness and their pride, somebody died because of this. And then it was through this person's death, they understood we can't do this on our own. We must come together and avenge Agent Coulson for Coulson. But in life, it may not be saving the earth. But in life, there is going to be something that happens. See, for some of you here, you will be moving out soon, going to college. Some of you might be going to boot camp. Some of you might be just staying at home. But because you are now graduated, out of high school, in college, in boot camp, God bless you, um, you are an adult. And there is going to be things, I promise you, within the next six months that, that are going to, to happen. And you will have the a choice. Do I do this on my own or do I call for help and get help in this thing that is going on? And this is what is going to happen when the option to get help happens. You are going to think certain thoughts. Some of these thoughts are... Pff, I'm a grown adult. I can do this. I got this. I don't have to call mom. I don't have to call dad. See, you're not a grown adult because you're a voice and still squeaking. But you will think these things. And then others are going to be, I should know these things. I should know how to do these things. I can't call them. Or I messed up. I ran over a dog and it exploded. I messed up. I got to get some help. But I can't tell mom and dad I messed up. 
I can't tell mom and dad I ran over a mailbox. I did, did that. 16, blinded by the sun, coming over a, a, a hill. And I was like, where's my son? Glasses, both hands off of my steering wheel. I was like, God, don't let that be a body. Thank God it was just a mailbox. But I did call dad, and I was like, dad, I need help. I just, dad, I just ran over a mailbox. Dad, I really need some help right now. And so it was really bad. But I called, but I called for help. But when you're grown and on your own, you will have these thoughts. I've got this. I can do this. You want to know how I know that? Because I've done it. Did it Monday night. We have just bought a TV wall mount, and we wanted to put it in our bedroom. And so Pastor Matt gave us a stud finder also. Every male will always grab a stud finder and go, beep, found it. Why? Because I, I, I have done that five times since I got that. Why? Pastor Matt found it for me, sent me a video of himself going, beep, found it. So that's how I know every guy still does that. But anyways, we go. We try and find those studs. Found them. Went to drill screws in. Couldn't find it. No stud there. So what do I do? I get anchors. Because that's what every person does after not finding a stud. But then guess what happens? We think we should probably call and get help on this. Me. I'm a grown man. I've lived in this apartment for five months. My wife is right behind me watching me, thinking this man is supposed to support me in everything, provide. I will provide a dadgum TV in our bedroom. Thank you, Zach Mayo. So what do I do? Put those anchors in. Start to screw it in. Break two anchors. So what happens next? Scotty gets mad. Yells at a wall for no reason. Why? Because I told myself I didn't need help. I didn't need anybody's help in this. And yes, that entire story is true. Ask her. That all happened. I left out certain more embarrassing parts as well. But all of that is true because I said to to myself, not out loud, I got this. I can do this. There is no way I'm going to ask for help right now. So what happens? Half of a TV mounts up. Half of it isn't up. No TV in our room still. So that's what happens. We end up, end up failing because our pride ends up causing us to fail. There's a very famous story in scripture that all of us have heard many times. I say many times because I have mentioned it up here, I know, five times within the last two years. But it's a story that had this person's pride not gotten the best of them, the entire story wouldn't have happened. The Bible says in 2 Samuel, Now, at a time of when kings went to battle, David stayed home. Well, if it's a time of that kings go to battle, why did David stay home? I thought about that some. I I have always thought David stayed home because David thought, I'm king. I have beaten the Philistines every time I have gone to fight them. All of these small countries out here of who I'm fighting against, they're scared of me. I don't even have to go and fight. My army can, can uh, go out there and do it themselves because I don't even have to go there. And so at a time of that kings went to battle, David stayed home. And what happens next? The part of that all of us have heard many times. Once upon a time, King David walked out of on his balcony, surveying all of his kingdom. House, house, girl, naked girl, naked girl. 
Servants. Eye contact not off of her one bit. Servants. That. Who is that down there? Oh, king. That is Bathsheba. She is the daughter of one of your mighty men. Now, David's mighty men was David's best fighters. David's mighty men were, were fighting for David of when King Saul of was chasing after him. He had been with David from the beginning of it all. King David, that is the daughter of one of your mighty men. She is also the wife of Uriah, another one of your mighty men. David knew her. David really knew these guys. And David goes, hmm, cool, 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 cool. You know what? Bring her up, uh, 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 up here. So then long story short, David basically rapes her, gets her pregnant, kills her husband, and then after he dies, marries her, trying to cover up everything that happened. All because at a time of when kings went to battle, David stayed home. David's pride was the first mistake made in all of these issues. So, our pride can be the thing of that makes or breaks us. So, well, when pride says, don't get help, get help. You are never too old to call home and say, Mom, Dad, I need help. I don't know how to do this. Is it hot water? Or is it cold? Because I don't want my uh, colors mixing. Mom, Dad, how the heck do I do taxes? Because that's real. And that sucks. But you are never too old to call home and ask for help. If you've messed up, you're never too old to call home and say, Mom, Dad... I messed up. I need help. Are they going to be mad? There's a chance. But it's better to get help than to keep digging a hole deeper and deeper. So don't let your pride get you. So back to our story. Bathsheba has her child. And for a year, year, David thinks, man, I've gotten away of with this. I'm, I, I, I have gotten away scot-free. There's no way anybody is going to catch me. But I think for a year, David has been avoiding God. Because for David to think I'm good, I'm fine, David wasn't talking to him. So David thinks, I'm good. I've gotten away with it. Nobody knows. Then in comes the prophet. Nathan. Long story short, Nathan says, King, you have failed and you have covered it up and God has seen every bit of it. And because of this, consequences are about to come at you. So what does David do? David had options at this point. Because at this point, the prophet says, because of this sin and because of how deep it is inside of you, this child is going to get sick and die. And other things past this are going to happen because of all of this. David could have, at that point, started saying, it wasn't my fault. She was out there. It wasn't my fault. The servant shouldn't have brought her up. And he could have put blame on everybody but 
himself. David could have just gone on acting as if nothing had ever happened. And then even David could have gotten mad and said, God, it's not fair. Why are these things happening? God, it's not fair. Make it right. Change these things now, God. But instead, what David did was this. David goes to to a room, shut the door, made it to where nobody could come in. And for seven days, David prayed and fasted. And David wrote one of the most passionate psalms that David wrote. Create in me a clean heart, O God. Renew your spirit in me. God, against you and you alone have I sinned. Don't take your Holy Spirit from me, but renew it in me and bring back joy inside of me again. God, if you asked for sacrifices, I would give you sacrifices, but you asked for a a broken and a repentant heart. David said, God, I've messed up. God, us has been broken. And I want to fix that. God, I need to mend everything that has been broken between us. Because what has happened inside of us is not good. So what David does is David comes to God. And he says, God, I've messed up. God, I'm so sorry. God, forgive me. And guess what? God did. When David died, David was known as a man after God's own heart. Every king after David was compared to David because his love for God was so great. Because David came to God and he said, God, I'm tired of hiding. I'm tired of faking it. I'm tired of saying I'm good. I've gotten away. But God, I haven't. God, I need you. God, I'm sorry. No matter what happens in life, I said this last week, and it's so true. No matter how big a failure, no matter what happens in life, God is for you. And when we call on God, God is waiting on us to call. And when we call, God's there. In the story of the prodigal son, The son was running home. He had told his dad, Dad, I wish you were dead. Give me my inheritance. My inheritance. Dad, give me everything that that is owed me after you die. He's acting as if his dad is dead. And he says, Dad, you're dead. Give me everything I'd I get, get. So his dad does. And his son goes and he gambles and sleeps it away. And then when he was at his poorest point, he was, a, he was helping feed pigs. And he was so hungry that he started eating that slop of that pig's ate. And as he was eating that slop, he said, even the servants in my father's house eat better than this. If I can just go home of and say, Dad, against you and you alone have I sinned, and I am no longer worthy to be your son, but just a lowly servant in your house. So he gets up. And he starts running home. And the Bible says of when the son was a far ways off, his father saw him and ran to him. 
The only way this was possible was if the father was on his porch going, where is he? Where is he? Ah, bird. Stump. Hold up. That's my boy. And he took off after him. And he met him and treated him as if he was a long lost son. Now in this story, God is that father and the son are those people of who turn their backs on God and go away and then come back. So if this is how God treats people of who turn their back on him, If we fail, if we slip up, and then we say, God, I'm so sorry. Please forgive me. Don't you think God's arms are going to be just as open for us uh, for saying, God, I have messed up? If he runs after those people that have turned their back on him, of when we mess up and say, God, against you and you alone have I sinned. He will welcome us in his arms again as well. He will say, I'm here. Repent, and I am here. That's all it takes is saying, God, I've messed up. God, I'm sorry. Because so many times our pride will tell us, I can't call home. I can't tell God I I have messed up. I've gone too far. I've done too much. God doesn't think so. God's waiting on you. God is waiting on you to say, God, against you and you alone have I sinned. And guess what? He's going to come at you with open arms. He's going to come at you. And he is going to take away that shame, that that regret. He's going to take it away. But you have to call on him and say, God, I need you. You can't let pride tell you, I can't call God. I can't call home you got to fight that pride. So to everybody, don't let pride get you. Don't think, I got this. I can do this on my own. If you need help, call on help. Physical help, spiritual help, call on that help. Get that help. Because those of who care for you are waiting on that. And the God in, he- in heaven who knows you by name and has called you his child is waiting on you to call you. Every head bowed and, and eye shut really fast. If you're in here tonight and would say, Scotty, there are things inside of me where I have messed up. Scotty, I even came down to the altar Wednesday, Sunday. But Scotty, there's still things inside of me of where I have messed up and it's hard for me to call on God. Scotty, I have messed up of and I need God's help. Scotty, there is shame. There is hurt. Or Scotty, I have just messed up. And I need to repent. Jesus, I thank you for this evening. God, I pray over each person in this place tonight. I pray that you would move in each person. And and for those stuff who put up a hand, 
God, I pray for forgiveness upon them. God, God, I pray, pray against shame. I pray against hurt. I pray against regret. And God, I pray for life and life more abundantly. And God, I pray over everybody else also. Jesus, I pray that as those hard times come, I pray that You would help remind them that they are not alone, that they have help, and all they have to do is to call on it. Be it a parent, be it a pastor, be it a friend, be it even You. God, in any and in every circumstance, they are not alone and they are loved by you. So, Jesus, I thank you this evening. And it's in your precious and in your holy name, Jesus, I ask these things. Amen. Hey, really quick, I want to do something a little special. I'm going to ask our three seniors to a stand up right here. And since we kind of can't crowd all of you up and pray all, pray over all of you, I'm going to ask that all of you stand up, like right now, stand up. And then I want all of us as a group to just stretch, stretch our hands toward them and to pray over them as well right now. So I'm going to pray out loud in this microphone, but as I say constantly up here, don't just pray up here, but pray out here. Because as we pray with our mouth out loud, we are praying and speaking into the uh, the uh, spiritual realm. And we are changing things as we speak with our mouths. So, at this point, let's all pray over them right now. Jesus, I thank you uh, for these three seniors. Jesus, I pray, pray a a blessing over all of them. Jesus, I pray if as that song says and as Scripture says, God, may Your presence go before them, beside them, around them, and in them. Jesus, I pray for an anointing upon each and every one of them. God, I pray if that they understand of that they are called and are loved by You. You. Jesus, you have them of in this place of for such a time as this. So God, right now I pray of that your Holy Spirit of would embolden and empower them and show them this is my time. This is my hour. I am where God has me and what I am doing is what God has of me. And so Jesus, right now, I thank you for this amazing accomplishment they have have so far but God as I said this is not the end but it is just the beginning and so I pray of that your Holy Spirit would move in them and continue to grow in in them also so Jesus I love you and I thank you and it's in your precious and in your holy name we ask these things amen all right, at this time, well, I'm going to ask Ms. Phyllis if she'll come up here really quick. Hey, Phil, grab those papers on the ping pong table, please. I left those up. Y'all can sit back down really quick. Actually, no. No, stay standing. Okay. They are in order. Yes, ma'am. Okay, so. My Leo Gomez Jr. Hagen Greer George. <laughs> Madison Michelle Martin. All right, at 
this time, I'm going to ask our three seniors to come, and I'm going to ask you all to stand right here really quick. All right, I need you all to grab those things under y'all's chairs really quick. And I'm going to ask you all to point them at an angle this way. All right? So, it is my pleasure and my honor to present to you for the first time ever one youth 2020 senior graduate! Go ahead, pop them. Twist them! Twist them! Boo on you! Boo on you! Oh, it was such a good idea that failed. Yay! 